All right, well, today we're out here with Aaron Sando, who does homeless outreach in uh, the Office of Governance and Management. Thanks for riding with me, Aaron. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about, uh, tell me a little bit about what your job is, what an average day looks like for you. Um, my job can be very interesting, given the situation. Yeah. Like today, actually, just in a few minutes, uh, our city hall, there's a lady that just came in randomly. She just walked in, went to the front lobby, the receptionist, asking for services. She, she wants a home, and uh, they called me, and I came down, visited with her. And I got her connected to go to the women's shelter. Okay. And so she's on her way there to get started. Yeah. Uh, at least that helps her so that she's off the streets. She got a bed tonight. She will have showers there. And she also have uh, some hot meals. Yeah. So a good point for her to get started. Yeah. Now, how long have you been with the city? Uh, it will be three years in December. Three I started, years. Yeah, I started December 2016. Yeah. yeah. And so when you started, you were pretty much at sort of the height of the homeless problem is in your view has it gotten better worse stayed the same um it has it has gotten better uh when i when i came in it was chaos like everywhere it was well in continuing engagement really pays off yeah you you're helping people redirecting them to services telling them um some people don't really know that those services are out there. Right. And so you, you explain to them, hey, you could access this service here, you could access this service there. And in time, uh, things have uh, dis- uh, kind of decreased. Yeah. Because people know, oh, we, we can go to this point of access that Aaron just redirected us to, and then we can get this and that. Right. And you, you're actively out in the community looking for individuals to help, right? Definitely, that's yeah. day in, day out, Monday through Friday, that's what we do. So Aaron, how many people do you think you've been able to help connect to services in in your time here at the city? Uh, if I was just looking at that this morning, since starting, I've helped uh, about 536. Wow. 536, and that ranges from connecting them to housing, giving them a uh, job connection, giving them uh, a ride back home if they so choose. We, we put our heart, mind, and soul into this so that people know that we are not just, you know, we are not just giving them a ticket to go somewhere and, and end up being back in the streets. Right. We want to make sure that this is legitimate. It's, 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 it's really, really something that they, that they want. All right, well, pulling up here to the Springwater Trail, so we're gonna get out and check the trail out. I know that this has been uh, had been a hot spot of an issue for illegal activity and camping and stuff, but I know that um, the team, you and the team have been out uh, making it better and Correct. helping people and connecting them to services and making the trail be the amenity that it's supposed to be. Correct. Yeah. So let's get out and take a look at what's going on. Okay. All right. Out here on the trail. So this is Springwater Trail and Dowsett Lane. Which, do you know who Dowsett was? Uh-uh. This, this is Gresham history now. Okay. The former mayor. Yeah. How you doing, Kevin? Very good. Good. Just so, hitting the trail. Come yeah. here every morning. All right. So, Kevin, you work for uh, Homeless Services as well with the city. So, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do. Well, my day-to-day varies, but first thing I do, guaranteed in the morning, is we hit the Springwater Trail. Yeah. We start at 17.9, which is Gresham City Limits and go all the way to uh, the other Gresham City limits to Portland. And basically just make sure the trail is clear, clean, yeah. Yeah. help tr- identify anybody who needs assistance, mm-hmm. and really just kind of keep it clean and livable for everybody. Uh-huh. So that's really the first thing I do every morning. Uh, we of course go on the My Gresham every morning to see if there's any new campers or anyone who needs any assistance. So let's talk about My Gresham. So what is sure. My Gresham? My Gresham is this fantastic, innovative app that citizens of Gresham can use to stay in constant contact with the city. Okay. It's a very effective tool. So with this app, if a person, say, on the trail or anywhere else in Gresham sees an individual who needs assistance, they can use the My Gresham app. It takes no more than 20, 25 seconds to let us know where exactly this person is. Mm-hmm. We generally are able to drop everything, go there immediately, and help them. Okay. We're here to keep the community clean yeah. and livable for everybody. Yeah. And, and we have access to solid resources to help people almost immediately. Awesome. For when they're ready for change. Right. 
Right. That's the important piece. Right. And so there's no, in the stretch of the Springwater Trail from Jenny Road, the uh, boundary to the west, all the way out to 17.9 mark on the east, you have no camping, no homeless activity. Virtually none. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we assure that because we're out here every day. Right. And as you know, that wasn't always necessarily the case. Right. And we just really stepped up efforts. And this is why we're out here so often too, is just to make sure that it doesn't return and that we are just simply here to help. You've also built relationships with the neighborhoods, yes. uh, the business community, you know, folks that have um, experienced, you know, different issues with illegal camping yep. or transient activity, whatever. I mean, that you built relationships with those individuals as well. Which was an important piece. I knew this needed to happen. You need to do this. This is the yeah. way a city should work, yeah. is have those relationships. Because again, we're all citizens. We all live here. We are a community as much as we are a city. And so I did, you know, we work very closely with the neighborhood associations, uh, the social service agencies, the nonprofits, the churches, all the other faith-based programs, all the other stakeholders, basically. Yeah. Everybody is in the know. And basically we're trying to just work with everyone and get everyone on the same page. Yeah. And yeah. we've had success out here because a lot of people have gotten on the same page. Right. Because we found a model that works. Right. Right. Describe that model to me that works. Why are, why are we being so successful in Gresham versus other parts of the metro region? Well, quick backstory. I was inspired to respond to a letter you had written to the city of Gresham. Yeah. Uh, to all citizens of Gresham. And basically what you said was there's nothing compassionate about letting a person live on the streets. True. I believe that 100%. Yeah. And then you also said it's important to be compassionate but firm. Yeah. I believe in that too. Some of these individuals have made some poor decisions in their life. Yeah. And we are here just to let them know that we are here to help, but we need to see that change. Right. And when they change, they become very successful. Right. So and now you've taught, you've, since, um, I don't know, since last summer, you've housed over over 100 now. Over 100 people. And when I say housed, not into a shelter. I yeah. will never count shelters housing. Yeah. While I think it's a great first step sometimes, yeah. we have permanently housed these individuals. That means long-term solution. Mm -hmm.